Hello and welcome back to another episode of Trisha's Talk Podcast. I am Trisha, your favorite one-of-a-kind host. I am a pleasure toy reviewer, a self-love coach for women, an adult content creator, and so much more than that. Welcome back to episode number 16, if I remember correctly. I got asked um, to do an episode about my experience in the swinger lifestyle. So this episode will be about my experience with swinging and also my tips that I can give to anyone who is curious, um, wants to start a swinging lifestyle, just wants to know a little bit more about the swinging lifestyle or who's already uh, in their swinging lifestyles and just want to have a little different perspective and some tips, um, I can pass that on. I definitely have a few years experience in the swinging lifestyle. And yeah, so let's start. How did I actually get into the swinging lifestyle? And that was when I was about 20, 21, and I met the father of my children, um, which became my marriage. And he was a swinger. And as soon as I got together with him, I was basically a swinger as well. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to now mention as well, um, my swinging experience with him was not a very, very good, healthy one. Let's put it that way. I was in a toxic relationship marriage with him. Um, there was DV um, included. So it wasn't the best. I know now a lot more about how a healthy swinging uh, relationship would work, the lifestyle, how it would work. Um, I have learned a lot through the experience that I've made. So I can definitely give some tips. I have made good experiences, bad experiences in regards to this. So um, it's a little bit of a mixed feeling when I am talking about the swinging lifestyle because there were obviously quite a few uh, fun, interesting, good experiences, but there were also some pretty bad ones because I was in that toxic relationship. <clears throat> so I ended up to be a swinger like that because it was, we're together now, um, this is what we're doing, and this is how the rules are, and this is what we're going to move forward to. So in regards to swinging, swinging is basically if you are a couple, for example, and you do want to have sex with others, um, share it with others outside of just with your partner. So it's kind of almost like an open relationship, but even that an open relationship is different to swinging because if you are in an open relationship, you might be able to allow the other partner to do whatever um, and you might not want to hear about it, but swinging is more like you um, choose together to have sex outside of um, your own partnership. And that can have, that can look different to every couple. So don't assume that every swinger has got the same ground rules, boundaries, um, because they can be completely different. So there's like soft swinging, soft swapping. Um, and also singles can do swinging as well and can adjoin, can attend swinger parties. So. In regards to the different rules, um, it's really helpful to find out um, with the swinger people that you meet to ask their rules, their boundaries, to check in with them and see them where they're at. So you could have couples that only play in the same room um, and only together. And even that could be if they do decide to um, play with others, is that just woman on woman is a completely couple swap is it just for oral is it for penetration as well um so there are completely like different ground rules to every swinger couple then there's also like complete swap and different rooms or um you know one partner says you go do your thing i have met a couple that was arriving together at the swinger party but they then at the door said all right bye 
enjoy yourself, honey. And um, we will see you later at 10 or 11, 12 when we're going to go. And then off they went, had their fun. And then they met just towards the end and left together. So, and then they just experienced, you know, whatever. Um, so you've got, and then I've got the couples that are just really sticking together and just want to experience that whole thing together. So there are completely different rules and it's really important that you check in with a person and don't just assume that everyone is playing by the same rules or boundaries. So that's really important. Um, so yeah, there are different, uh, opportunities where you can do swinging. So there are swinger parties, swinger events, um, you can have private parties, group parties. Um, you can have that all spontaneously. For example, you go out and you're like, oh my God, like, look at her. Like, she looks amazing. Like, let's take her home. Um, and spontaneously, you know, have a threesome and do your swinging or, um, you plan it and you go to one of these events. As I said, you can have it with couples. You can do it as solo. Um, and, just remember it's also different to polyamory because polyamory is where you have different romantic relationships where swinging is there is that couple that partnership but you do step outside to just experience a sexual connection um usually in regards to swinging it's a goal that you don't develop any emotional feelings for anyone else this is why a lot of people um really prefer the swinger parties where you go meet someone and then, you know, you leave and then that's it. Like you're not going to see them again, or you go on dating apps to uh, find someone to hook up with, um, to have over. But then you've also got couples who might be looking for someone a bit more um, regular or couples um, meet other couples. And because you share that swinging lifestyle, you might, um, share a deeper bond and connection and you become friends uh, and you regularly catch up to have um, these swinging experiences. But you do need to be cautious in this regards to really be open, honest and communication that you do not develop feelings um, because then it's going to get pretty complicated. So that's why some people prefer this, some people prefer something else. So it's really the same with the boundaries and ground rules. It really depends on the swinger and couples. So um, how did I get into it? As I said, um, it was directly like, you are swinger now. So here you go. Um, because my um, partner back then, um, he was a swinger and he threw swinger parties at his own place. So this is where I got to meet some of his friends. Uh, he went very intimate with and straight away I was included into that. And I'm just like, okay, here we go. Uh, this is exciting. This is like all new. And I was like, I mean, I was 20, 21 and I had no idea about swinging and he was 10 years or is 10 years older than me. And I just believed whatever he said. I was very naive, very much in love and I was love bombed in like, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, 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 that's amazing. That's like, I love all of that. Like, yeah, whatever you say. So uh, the rules were basically made up by him. Um, I didn't have much of a voice, um, which I didn't really see back then. And as I said, I didn't know much about how swinging works um, and just believed because he was pretty experienced, it seems as well. Um, so I went along with it. And the rule was basically that he was allowed to do everything, um, but I was only allowed to do things with women. And because I am bisexual and very much interested in women as well, and I had him, so I'm like, oh, yeah, cool, I've got you as a male, so all right, I'm, I'm happy to just focus on the women. Um, and, yeah, if then someone else, like a male, wanted to have any further contact, I really needed to be very, like, no, this is not going to happen. Um, if I like just slightly flirted back, it was like in drama and there was big jealousy in there. So, which is not something, um, good as a couple. If you are going down that road for a swinging lifestyle, if there's jealousy, etc. So you do need to be really, um, sure about that step. So if, I have got friends because they know that I was a swinger and I was always very open about all of that. I never hid that. Um, oh, I'm interested in the swinger. Like we want to spice up things and we want to go to swinger party. And 
I'm like, okay, okay. So you want to spice up things? Like, have you tried other things first? And um, I always really recommend to start slow. So start slow. Don't throw yourself like, we want to spice things up. Let's go to a swingers party and have sex with someone else. <gasps> Like, this could be so overwhelming. Like, just going to a swingers party is like a huge step if you've never been to one. So, <clears throat> in this regard, I always say start slow. And even if you then do decide to go to a swinger party, um, you don't necessarily need to have sex with someone else at a swingers party. You can go there as a couple and just be a couple and just explore, just watch, observe. It's a great place to just see and watch others having sex um, or being watched. You know, there are rooms or there are open places where you can have sex and you just be watched and you can get such a turn on for that. And then you go home and, you know, you just be like, wow, this was amazing. Like being watched, hearing others, seeing others, being just there or laying next to others. And even just saying like, you know, we don't want to be involved, but we would like to like lay next to you and like, you know, have our stuff while we can see you, hear you and just be in that energy space. Um, so there are opportunities where you can start slow and then the more confident you're going to get, the more often you're going to attend, uh, know what you want, um, you know, always talk to each other. So I'm already stepping into the tips here. Um, honest open communication with your partner is like the number one tip with trust you need trust in each other open honest communication set healthy boundaries and clear boundaries that you both agree on not just one agrees on and someone else follows you both need to agree on the boundaries and the set rules so um, as I said, that could be like, you know, not partner swapping, not changing rooms or, um, you know, no penetration or just, you know, female, female, um, play with each other, whatever. So you need to have that clear boundaries and set groups that you both agree on. Then also, um, set yourself like a signal. So that could be like a code word or, um, a hand or like a gesture, like a movement that you do when you are in a situation and you are the other one, one of them gets triggered because not every day, um, it's like body image. So not every day you feel like a hundred percent confident in your body. So you've got days where you wake up and you're like, today I'm not feeling a hundred percent confident in my body. Uh, today I feel like, you know, uh, this doesn't look right. And I feel like a bit sluggish and like fat or whatever. Um, that could be the same. So there could be a situation and you just feel like, oh no, this triggers me like right now. I do not like it. I don't want to proceed like to go with any further that you can signal your partner and be like, I don't like, I want to stop here. Like I need to get out of here without saying like, oh, I don't like it. Like stop out. And you know, and everyone's just like, whoa, what's happening here? Um, You can give like signal, like pull your ear or like tap him on the shoulders or two taps, one tap, like whatever it is, or code word, um, to then signal your partner, like we need to stop here. And then you can like remove yourself and say like, Oh, look, um, we may be, you know, going to do such and such and, um, go get some food. We haven't really eaten today and, you know, we just need a break or whatever to get out of that situation. So that's really good. Um, and then regularly check in with, with each other. So only because you set yourself these ground rules and boundaries at some stage doesn't necessarily mean that's going to like stay forever. You change. We change over time. That is wanted, uh, desired. And with change, your likes and dislikes might change. So your rules might change. So you might be a little bit more open-minded now and be like, hey, I would like to explore now something with another male. I would like to have another male threesome or not just another woman. Like, what do you think about that? Can we talk about that? Um, or I'm fantasizing this now. Can we adjust this rule? Or I do not like that anymore. Like, can we not go that far? So regularly checking in with each other, open, honest, clear communication in this regards. Practice safe sex. Um, still going to have to mention that. So, which is actually a good thing in the swingers party that 
all the swingers parties I have been, um, there are always condoms, loops, like all that stuff is supplied there. Awesome. Private parties, just make sure you bring some stuff with it. Spontaneous uh, threesomes where you just pick someone up, make sure safe sex. So it is a ground rule at the swingers party. So everyone knows penetration is only with condoms. Um, but yeah, if you do private stuff, just make sure that you practice safe sex. Um, another tip is in regards to going to parties. Um, and even if you do events, um, or private parties, reduce the alcohol intake. It's just something when, when you drink too much, you're just not going to be behaving the way you usually would. You lose control and it's not good um for events like that because you want to be giving consent and you can't give consent properly when you are drunk so preferably don't drink or have one or two drinks that you are still in control and you can give your proper consent so that's very important there as well and evaluate after it so if you've been to a swinger party and come back um home preferably it's up to you like straight after or the next day when you had some rest and just like hey how did you find last night like what went well for you like what did you like what you didn't like like um what do you think about this and about her and him and like what we did there like oh I've never seen you doing that like can we do that as well here and you know check in with each other and have a look like where you're currently at and what you can gain out of that so um, <laughs> this is like so my tips that I can basically give you in regards to my swinging experience. So I became straight away a swinger and we had more uh, private parties at the start with his friends um, that I got like included then. And it was very exciting. Um, I definitely enjoyed the woman on woman fun as well. Um, I had a lot, a lot of threesomes with a woman included. A lot of people say that's the unicorn hunting. Um, when you are a couple and you just invite, want to invite a female, so that's a unicorn, um, is pretty, pretty hard, time consuming because a lot of couples want to just have invite another woman. Um, it's pretty rare, but it did happen quite a lot, especially when I was then backpacking also in Australia. <laughs> um, the backpackers are a little bit open-minded in this regards. Uh, so that was quite fun. I definitely enjoyed that. My first swinger party that I went to was um, a few months into my, okay, you are a swinger now and this is like your partnership. This is how it's going to work. And I'm like, I want to go to swinger um, party I've never been He's, oh my god like I'm gonna take you I'm like, okay so we went a little bit like when people go to swinger parties they usually do not go to those swinger events locally when they want to hide that they are swingers so they choose like the next city and then they go there stay overnight somewhere close to the swingers event um and so they can you know just randomly have sex with someone but have no really connection and then go back to their normal lifestyle at home where no one knows anything and you haven't met anyone because you could like if you go locally you could <laughs> meet a work colleague or you know or a friend from a friend um we never hit that so it was fine but he said he wanted to bring me to one uh, that was a little bit out so i think it was like 20 minute half an hour out so we went to that one and it was good. Like it was a um, nice location. So there was some food in Germany. You get, um, you pay an entry fee, which is like for a couple, let's say it's a hundred dollars for a single it would be $50. Um, you pay a hundred dollars and it's usually like in the evening, but they're also like Sunday morning events, depending on the swinger location. Um, so that was an evening one went there. I think it was like by six, seven and there's like some some food some snacks and stuff in the kitchen so you can have some snacks some foods there's like usually a bar area um and then there are different rooms so it's basically like a like a house like a building and um you've got different rooms and every swinger party house location that i've been through was different um 
all special and unique in their own little ways. Uh, and yeah, I got there and that was my first time. And <laughs> the audience, the audience was quite um, older than me. So, I mean, he's 10 years older. Um, they were all about like at least 10, 15 years older than me. And we walked in. And I had quite a few people staring straight at me. And then he just said, like, well, you're new. Uh, you're young. So they will be all over you. And I'm like, oh, God, here we go. And then someone actually said, like, oh, fresh meat. I'm like, oh, my God, like, really? And it does feel like it. So I've been to swinger parties also where I have been more often. And then when someone new comes in, just really... People are like, oh my God, she's new. Like there's a single female or like, this is like, they're on the hunt, <laughs> on the hunt. So yeah, that was my first um, swinger party. And we were not playing with anyone. It was more like us because I just wanted to have a look um, to get the feeling like how it was. So it was okay. Um, but then we did attend quite a couple more that were a little bit better because the rooms were better because that was like just a normal house kind of thing. Um, and we went to one that had a cross and it was more like the cross was more in the hallway. So where he got, he tied me up to the cross and he did his magic on me. And that's one of the things that I love like to submit. And um, it was quite amazing. And I did, I was in my, in my space and I didn't realize until like just close to the end, I don't, of a sudden I had an audience standing around me or us. And once I was finished, like we were finished, um, they applause. <laughs> so me tied up at the cross, completely done, dusted. And then everyone's clapping and I'm just like, what is happening here? <laughs> And after that, we went up to the area, the, like the bar area to like, you know, calm down, calm down. Um, and just people like around me and they're just like, oh my God, like this looked so hot and this was so amazing. And da 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 da. And he did this to you. And like, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we had the rest of the night was just having chats about like kinks and um, different things. That That's something that I really liked was with the swinger lifestyle the people that I have usually met in within the swinger lifestyle have been more open-minded, always welcoming, really nice. They follow the etiquettes, the rules from the swinger parties because um, the owners, they usually do checks on the people. And if you're new, you might have to like um, have like an introduction um, meeting first. So it doesn't interrupt the atmosphere, which is amazing that they do that to keep everyone safe uh, and they encourage you. If you say no and someone is not listening, that you really report that and they are going to be kicked out straight away and they're going to be banned. So they are usually like proper event people, swing up um, parties. They normally have it really, they are on top of it and this is amazing. So I love that. Um, <clears throat> and when we got in regards to this, uh, I had another party that we went to and that was packed. <laughs> packed in regards to it was there was sex and banging happening everywhere and there was no space. Like there were people actually standing there next to the bed waiting that they finished so they could pop on the bed to their their go. And that was one of the parties where I'm just like I'm not feeling it. I'm not liking it. Like, like this is weird. Like standing there and then even if you were like, I was just getting on the bed and then there was already someone else standing there waiting for me to finish. I'm like, no, nah, I, don't, I don't like that. <laughs> I'm out of here. And then go down to the bar and just have chats down at the bar. But yeah, you can meet some really great um, open-minded people in this. So I always found that was um the best highlight to even just make connections. And um, then I had one of the parties that was in Australia. Precastle was there. Not sure if you know about Precastle, but he actually paints with his dick. Um, and he was painting us 
uh, with his penis. <laughs> so that was interesting. That was exciting to meet him. Uh, and yeah, while I'm at that topic, so I've been to swinger parties in Germany and I've been to swinger parties in Australia. And I have to say there was a difference between the German and the Australian. In Germany, you go there and you're pretty much straight away dressed down. Well, to, at least to the parties that I have been to. Um, not sure how it is there now. Um, you like in lingerie or like something just really sexy or you already go there naked and just have your towel to sit on your towel. Um, where here in Australia, you are sexy, seductive clothes, but still properly closed until like, I think nine o'clock when the door then closes and then everyone just strips naked and goes into it. Um, and I have found it was always a little bit slower to start here in Australia than in Germany. It was more straight into it. Um, yeah, so that was a little bit of a difference. And I always found the Germans a little bit more open-minded than the Australians. Though I have to say now, I can see a huge change. And especially now living here, Brisbane in city, um, it's definitely getting there so and i can't compare it to germany anymore because i haven't been there for a long time now um one of the best swinger house parties that i have been through is the rabbit hole parties in adelaide that swinger house is a dream like oh my god that was the best place and i love it when the swinger house parties location is really nicely set up has got lots of opportunities to play and variation there as well. And not just like, this is a house, there are three rooms, there are some condoms, some loops, go into it. That's a little bit like, yeah, right. So the atmosphere really, really matters. And sorry, I still have a little bit of a snuffy nose. <laughs> and you probably can still hear it from my voice. <clears throat> and that house is just a dream. I would love that house. So there's um, like lockers, changing room is um, just uh, downstairs. And then there was like a room where you have the massage tables and you can get more that sensual massage, oiling up. Um, there was a spa, so for the wet area, then showers that are open. So you have got the opportunity of watching us having shower, sex under the shower, like, you know, have your way there. Um, the kitchen was really nicely open with kitchen bench. So if you want to have sex on the kitchen bench, um, then you've got the pool. So you could play pool there, um, while you have drinks and, you know, get naughty, have your sexy time around the pool table on the pool table. Just don't break it. Um, there was a part where there was a pole for pole dancing and seatings around. So that was nice. Um, then cross and, um, restraining beds downstairs outside area and hooks where you can hook other things on for more kinky stuff and ropes um, and then upstairs it's usually a downstairs area is more like the the party get together sensual like softer way and then upstairs you can like you know go crazy um, you've got normally got the rooms upstairs the open rooms, you usually have open rooms, and that was there as well, open rooms, sex swing, um, open rooms have got like long beds, double beds, multiple beds together, so you've got big groups having fun, not necessarily all doing it, but maybe just laying next to each other or getting together, different beds, um, and then different rooms, rooms that you can uh, close the door, and then closed, you're not going to open it, and that means they want to be private, but then you've got, or well, they leave it open so you can peek in or look in and ask if you can join or not join. Um, they had a BDSM room, an aftercare room. The BDSM room, oh my God, that bed, so amazing. And they have like different chairs and the spanking chair and like just, oh my God, it was amazing. And lots of kinky tools around there and that was where I also experienced a kink party where um I got a little bit into like electro and I'm like electro stimulation I'm like oh my god this was so fun I'm being tied up to a pole and then with electro it's like wow love that aftercare room so amazing with like just lots of pillows and blankets to like really 
so no no sex in the aftercare room it's really for like coming back to your space um and yeah coming back to normal for cuddling laying there you know just yeah and bathrooms like it was just amazing i love that house so amazing um and the parties and the owners they're all amazing um i had a similar not a similar but i had also a swinger location that i liked in germany that was that was in hanover it's like a bar and then everything was happening downstairs so you went downstairs and there was like a a gynecology um room set up and a bdsm room and then a light room a mirror room or a room where you think like for you it's a mirror but it's actually see like looks the others from the other side can see you so i was pressed against the mirror and i saw like oh, i'm pressed against the mirror i see myself but on the other side people could actually see me being pressed against it and just knowing that as well and then i watched a couple that was like having fun in front of me and i was just like that is hot <laughs> so um yeah so i did have quite a few great experiences in this regards that i remember now telling you was like oh my god yeah this and this and this and this and this um then obviously i did have my bad experiences which was a lot just to do with how unhealthy the rules boundaries were um and a lot a lot outside of all of that that went not good at all which i'm not going to get into i don't have to scare anyone with scary stuff all i can just say is that you be that you need to do these things really with someone you trust and really do it the right way use the tips that i've talked uh, and mentioned about here you really have that open honest communication to do it the right way um i did go to some swinger parties after i have been after i separated just because i wasn't sure like is that actually my lifestyle is it not do i want to be a swinger if like or was it just something that i did with him and um i did enjoy the swinger parties where i was but i didn't actually get into doing anything with anyone else because i couldn't build that connection and that is when i really realized for myself that um i am someone who likes to get intimate with someone i have a connection with i just can't do it when i just meet someone and be like oh yeah hi um yeah you like this you like that let's do it it's just like i think it's just way more satisfying for me when i have a connection with that person so being demisexual but also bisexual um and swinger parties are usually that that kind of thing like you don't want to have the emotional connection so this is like when i then found out maybe i am poly so and it has been really great for myself to go out and explore and i am someone who really enjoys exploring experimenting and learning my lessons out of it and things that i can then pass on i've got so many stories to tell um and not everything's gonna work fine and amazing and smooth um but i am learning from that and i'm finding myself through that find learn getting to know myself more and it leads me every time to something else and something else and something else and i the more i do that the more i can really embrace my true authentic self so the swinger lifestyle as such isn't my lifestyle um solo polyamy um is now my lifestyle which um i'm because i'm bisexual i can really see myself having relationships with a woman and a man at the same time but relationships connections and then being intimate and not uh just hooking up and you know uh that's just not really it um i also have to say in the swinging lifestyle <clears throat> it is quite time consuming and hard to find the right people um you know you are on apps and if you go on tinder now for example you see a lot of couples trying to find the unicorns or other couples it is uh not as easy to find your right people in this regards and with swinger parties you never know what kind of other people are there um 
it's great when they offer like oh under 30 party or over 30 party so at least you already know um the age that's gonna be there present but otherwise you never know like you could go to swinger parties and you want to do something with someone else but you're actually not finding anyone attractive or that spark was to actually do something with it someone with it so um yeah this is basically uh what i can say to my swinging lifestyle experience i just made this episode like whatever came into my mind <laughs> i haven't really thought about like what i wanted to um bring across from the experience but maybe i'm gonna do another one if there are lots of other things that i remember um but i hope this was a little bit of a good insight for anyone who's curious about swinging a swinger lifestyle um take on board the tips uh and yeah don't be uh scared that's why i probably didn't <laughs> say all the bad things but also don't go into it too easily being like oh yeah, i just want to spice things up and here you go um so if swinging is calling you just uh try to do it in a healthy and in a good way and talk open honestly with your partner um let me know in the comments below um how you found this episode and yeah <laughs> i will leave you with that and i will hopefully hear you see you at one of my next episodes if you would like to see more of me your favorite one-of-a-kind trisha then go to trishaslife.com.au and you can join trisha's life and to all my beautiful queens if you would like to learn more on how to love the shit out of yourself then go to selflovewithtrisha.com and you can join my self-love queendom and with that said, lots of love. Bye.